Hello, and welcome to my first YouTube video, and I'll be talking about my impressions of the Xbox One. You're probably seeing Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which is my first set of uh, online matches. Trying out my new capture card, Aver Media Game Capture HD2. I recently just purchased the Xbox One Advanced Warfare bundle, but I already own it for the PS3 and PS4 d digital versions. So the first thing I want to talk about is the network. The network for me doesn't work half of the time, even if the website states that things have been resolved and the network status is okay. But when going into a game, my network status will be strict or moderate. And then when I do the multiplayer network test, it will say that I have a high packet loss, and this may affect network quality. So that's a little bit frustrating when it comes to the network. At the moment, Microsoft and Sony are being hacked, but Sony seems to be handling the situation a lot better than Microsoft, and I think this is because of the port network code. It's funny, in my opinion, Xbox has better database design than Sony's, and at one time in an interview with the Sony CEO about sub-accounts and ID changes, he mentioned that the PlayStation Network theoretically could allow players to change their IDs, but would have to make a lot of changes throughout the database. This, to me, tells tells me that their database is not normalized and I will just go into what I think the network topology is for Xbox One versus PSN and what you're paying for. In my opinion, it appears that Microsoft hosts their own servers for their games that allows certain standards with their games, but introduces a single point of failure if a game server goes down. As opposed to the PSN, I think Sony just has the authentication servers and allows developers to use their own servers along more freedom but having as but not having a standardized feature set for for multiplayer what does this mean if true well if insomnia servers went down for resistance 3 other games on psn won't be affected but with xbox live developers can focus on developing the game but working with a more strict network so if halo 5 servers go down it will affect the whole xbox live it's a give or take situation in the end. I think Microsoft's database design allows allowing name changes. That's something mandatory in development. Editing, because I'm a programmer myself, but I like the freedom that the PSN has with the network development. If if developers can't utilize it, it can be pointless. This theory is coming from various interviews and E3 presentations about both respective respected online structures that have been talked about officially by devs and reps. In the end, it appears you're really paying for, you're not really paying for online for Xbox, you're just paying for the network topology, if correct, and with PSN, you're most likely paying for network expansions and features. And one last thing I want to talk about the network is that it's preventing me from playing most of my games, but the good part is that there's an offline mode which allows you to share your Xbox Live uh, gold with other accounts that sign in which is pretty cool but at the same time i should i shouldn't there shouldn't be a feature like that it should just be automatic to play offline especially if you buy if you buy the physical copy of the game and you, you install it it should just automatically work but that's how it is it's set up so as with the game you have to install every physical game purchase to the console and for the most part this would not bother me since the PS4 does this within 30 seconds or less. And I think the problem is that the console downloads the digital version from the servers, then locally because it takes forever to download. And this is coming from a person who mainly played on the PS3 last generation, and downloading times from local media would never take this long. As with the Xbox One UI, it's a tile-based interface with different sizes and switches orientations and stuff. And to me, it feels like it was designed for touch technology than a controller input. When comparing this to the PS3 with a cross media bar, many people didn't like this, but for me as a computer programmer, it was minimal and did what it needed for the player with easy navigation for the default input device. And with the PS4, it somewhat enhances the cross media bar. So it still uses that same simple navigation, but it adds a lot more information because of the social features. But here with Xbox One, it's like a tile-based thing. So it feels like a touch interface, a touch UI than a controller UI.
so it's a little bit frustrating I think because also it was designed more to use with the connect to emphasize the connect features so we're trying to f they're trying to force you to use the connect to navigate then actually use your controller because it would be so cumbersome but I don't know I don't really like the UI when it comes to using the, the controller but the UI itself it's nice it's like a pretty design but if it was if it had touch, touch technology it would be ideal but with the controller I don't really like it I don't really have much to say about the controller is that I like it um, it's smaller it's well the things I don't like is as mostly um, like design wise with uh, with accessories because you still have to use proprietary te uh, technology for like chat pad or the headset you can't use like a standardized PC headset or it, it, that part is a little bit frustrating but besides that the way the controller feels and handles it's okay with me like I'm it's fine like I have no problems so to conclude this impression I would say at this point the Wii U is a better console than the Xbox One but I'll wait it out because the PSN and Xbox Live are being hacked but once I get used to the console I will release a video going through the UI, the process of putting in the game for the first time, and just an overall experience of what you should expect when purchasing the console. On a simple scale of a negative 1 to a positive 1, with negative 1 being completely DRM console, 0 being a median, like a middle ground between DRM and non-DRM DRM consoles, and 1 being a pretty much a DR, DRM free console when purchasing physical, purchase, when purchasing physical games. I would say Xbox One is a negative one, the PS4 is a zero, and the Wii U, Wii U is a one. So hopefully I'll be making more videos, and if, and if the gameplay is still going on, enjoy the gameplay. UAV above. Drone in action. Care package incoming. Enemy UAV online. He's been hit. Friendly UAV above.
that's how it's done. RTB for debrief.